University. This is a joint work with Wen Haoyang, Jia Dongliang, Professor Zhi Huazhang, and Professor Michael Jordan. In this work, we study the so-called Poyak robots' average Q learning from both asymptotic and non-asymptotic perspectives. Let me first introduce some preliminaries. We study the algorithm in a Markov decision process. In this process, an agent is interacting with the environment repeatedly. At iteration t, the agent will receive the current state s t and perform an action a t. Once the environment receives the action, it will reveal the reward r t and the next state s t plus one to the agent. In this way, the agent will end re endlessly re in interact with the environment in order to find the optimal Q value function. More mathematically speaking, this MDP could be characterized by the fun by the tuple. Here S is the state space, A is the action space, gamma is the discount factor, P uh, gamma is always uh, smaller than one and it could be zero. P is the probability transition kernel and the capital R is the immediate winner reward. We use the lower white R to denote its expectation. A policy is a mapping from the state space to the action space. Uh, we denote its value function and Q value function as the conditional expectation of the sum of discounted random reward. And indeed, as argued, our target is to find the optimal Q value function Q star, which is the Q value function of the optimal policy that maximizes uh, we pi s for each given s. A classical result means, shows that the optimal Q value function is the fixed point of the BIM operator. The BIM operator is given in equation one. There are two randomness in this in order to evaluate the tau. The first is the random reward that is involved in the reward lower wise r. The second concerns the transition that is revealed in the second term in the equation one. However, in practice, we do not have direct access, access to these uh, quantities. As a result, we have only data that is generated from the corresponding distributions. In the synchronous setting we consider, at the iteration t, for each essay pair, the agents observe an uh, independent reward and observe the next state as t. Based on these observations, the agents could obtain an unbiased and independent estimate of the BIM operator. Here we denote it as the hat tau t with the explicit formulation in equation 2. But comparing the equation one and equation two, we can find that we just replace the expectation with empirical data. The most popular model frame algorithm in our era is the Q-learning algorithm, which used the empirical Bellman operator to incrementally update the Q-value function in equation three. Here, the eta t is the step size. Uh, the robot the Poyak robot average of Q learning is simply the average of the first couple of running Q iterate. That is, when we want to do inference, we do not use the last iterate QT, but instead we use the average iterate. This is simple uh, modification will often have some faster and stability benefits. An important random vector in our analysis is the so-called Berman noise, which is a S times A dimensional vector. For simplicity, we let D to denote the product of S and A. Okay, for each S A entry of this vector, it is exactly the, the random noise in the estimates of Bemanoid, of the Berman empirical Berman operator. So a very important quantity is the random vectors covariance matrix, which is given in equation five. 
Okay, so under some classical results, like say the reward is bounded, the polis is unique, and we use the polynomial step size. Classical results shows that the average Q iterate uh, has a asymptotic normality. In other words, um, the diff the differences between the, the Q bar T and the Q star and the times root T will really converge to a brain to a Gaussian distribution. Here, uh, the Gaussian distribution's covariance matrix is given in equation six. Uh, and we can see that in the center of this formula, it's the uh, the, the variance of the Bellman noise. And on both sides, it's the uh, amplifier matrix that is depend on the discount factor gamma, the, the transition kernel P, and the octopus pi star. So using this asymptotic normality and the bounded convergence theory, we know that the expected L infinity norm times the, the root t will, con will also converge to the quantity of uh, the corresponding quantity of the Gaussian distribution. So if we want to obtain an epsilon optimal uh, optimal uh, Q value function that is measured in the expected L infinity norm, we can know that we at least require the log d over epsilon square and times a uh, a little complex term. This term we call this as the difficulty indicator, which is the uh, matrix infinity norm of the diagonal matrix that is taken from the covariance matrix we are we are Q. And, oh sorry. And the classical result shows that this difficulty indicator is upper bounded by one minus gamma times minus three. So uh, by plugging this bound, we can find that the average Q learning seems already achieved the worst case minimax lower bound. So based on the observation, we want to ask the following question. First, can we obtain a valid non synthetic bound that uh, give the precise uh, this convergence happened? Second, from the uh, unsymptotic perspective, we want to know whether this asymptotic variance is optimal or not. The last question is, uh, can we do statistical inference without estimating the variance uh, matrix? So we first answer the first question. Uh, we give the instant dependence covariance rate, uh, convergence rate, when we use similarly uh, a, a polynomial decaying step size. We find that the expected L infinity norm it's dominated by the turn we find earlier, while the remaining turns are some high order turns in terms of t, which means that as long as t is sufficiently large, the arrow is dominated by this quantity. This quantity also appears in previous analysis, for example, in the variance reduced Q-learning that is proposed by Kamaru. We also provide another uh, result for for the slightly convert decaying faster step size. That is the, the linear uh, decaying step size. Unfortunately, our result shows that the dominant turn is slightly worse because the replace quantity is it could be slightly larger than the difficulty um, the difficulty indicator due to the second equation. So it's still an open question whether we could close this gap. Okay, in order to, for the second questions, our answer is that the asymptotic variance is optimal in a locally minimax sense. However, in order to make this statement explicit, we need some definition in semi in semi parametric statistics. Our MDP model has parameter P and R. Here P is the transition probability which which uh, since we consider the discrete actions and state space. P is actually can be 
parameterized by s times a distribution on the act on the state space. So it is fully parametric. However, for the reward, since we did not specify which distribution the random reward comes from, this is the reason we enter the same parametric statistics. An important concept is the regular asymptotic linear estimator. Due to time limit, I will not introduce this concept very detailed, but from a high level, um, an estimator is called regular. If its limiting distribution is unaffected by local changes in the data generating process, and an estimator is called asymptotic linear if its estimation error multiplied by the root t has the following um, finite sum decomposition as the equation 7 shows. Here, the OP1 denotes uh, a term that is convert, converts to zero in, pro in probability. And the such phi in this composition, such phi is called as an influence function. And our second result is that uh, for any IL estimator that is computed from the first t iteration stata, um, its asymptotic variance is always larger than the VARQ, that is we, that's the matrix we already introduced earlier. And the average iterate Q bar t is the optimal IL estimate for the Q star because we can because we can first show that it is regular and then it is asymptotic linear due to the decomposition in equation seven. And we can find that this, this um, influence function, if we compute its covariance, it, it, it is exactly the VARQ. In the end, we, we try to answer the last question. That, that is, we can do statistical inference without estimating the covariance matrix. Our result is that under the same conditions, we can show that this particular partial sum process, which is a random function on the interval 0 to 1, will converge to a rescaled Brownian motion. Here, the variance matrix VRQ is exactly the same we introduced already. Okay, so from the continuous mapping theory, we know that for any continuous function of f, that is function of function. As long as it's continuous, we can show that the function uh, of the function value of the partial sum process, which is a one dimensional random variable, will weakly converge to the f value of that scaled Brownian motion. So if we could choose a scale invariant continuous functional f. This matrix scale will vanish because it is scale invariant. In this way, we know that f, the f value of the partial sum process, will weakly converge to a totally no distribution, which is the f value on the d dimensional Brownian motion. So, in this way, we obtain a asymptotic pivotal statistics which could help us, us to do inference. In our paper, uh, we find the f that is uh, following the spirits of the statistics, and then we formulate it in the equations 12. So let me conclude our result. In our work, we studied the average Q learning and try to answer three questions. We find that the average Q learning achieved the worst and the instant-dependent optimality and providing two non-asymptotic bounds. Asymptotically speaking, we find that the average Q-learning have the optimal asymptotic variance, which achieves the semi-parametric lower bound we established. Finally, we can establish a functional central limit theorem that helps us to do online statistical inference without estimating the covariance matrix. That's all my presentation. Thank you for listening and attention.